name is Sarah and today we're talking about The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. The story follows a man named Monsieur Jean Perdue who runs a bookshop barge on the river Seine called the Literary Apothecary and uses his intuition into exactly what a person needs to prescribe them books for the ailments which nothing else can cure. Despite his ability to mend the broken hearts of many using books, he seems unable to heal his own from its greatest loss when his dearest love left him over 20 years ago leaving nothing but a letter. One day he finally reads the letter and sets sail with a best-selling but blocked author to make peace with his past and see how the story ends. I would describe this as sort of a combination of a coming-of-age story 20 years later and a reckoning with having loved and lost. The reason I would describe it as sort of a coming-of-age story is because at the time that Jean Perdue's love left him, he effectively put his life on hold for the next 20 years until he reads this letter and it sets him off on this journey. As he progresses down the river with this best-selling author and this chef, it's really about all of them, particularly Jean Perdue, coming to terms with having loved someone and lost them and finally learning after 20 years what the end of the story is. My official rating for this book was 4.5 stars. It took me a little while to decide how I felt about it, but the more that that I thought about it. It really, it's just a lovely story. It's very unique and I really, really loved the way that it was written, the characters. There was a lot that I loved about it. So the reason that I wound up taking the half star off of it was sex is a big part of the relationship that Jean Perdue has with his great love that he has lost and while I don't have an issue with sex in books necessarily, the way that George talked about certain things didn't seem to flow with the rest of the story. I would describe this in many ways as a very lyrical book. The prose is very lovely and very flowing and almost like poetry in certain points and just the language that she used to talk about certain things regarding the relationship between Purdue and his love just didn't, it didn't seem to fit in the book and for that reason, I couldn't quite give it my full five star, I love this thing to pieces rating. One thing that I was pleasantly surprised about is this book was originally written in German and translated into English a few years later and very rarely have I come across a book that's been translated from some other language into English that flows in a way that you would hope it would. There tends to always be turns of phrases or word choices that are a little bit awkward and you can sort of tell that maybe that's not the original intent that the author had but when it was translated into English just something didn't click in the translation and I did not find that to be the case at all with this book. In fact, like I said, I really did find the quality of the prose in this book to be very lyrical and elegant and it just flowed in a very lovely, wonderful manner and one of the things that I really loved about this book is how quotable it was and I know that sounds kind of weird and I don't mean quotable in the sense that we think of like movies being quotable where there's these like one-liner pithy phrases and stuff but I mean it in the sense that there are so many sentences and phrases and paragraphs where you read it and you just wanted to capture it and remember it and I keep a running note on my phone of quotes that I like from books that I love and especially in the beginning of this book, I felt like I was stopping every other page to write down a quote because there were just so many wonderful turns of phrases and ideas and metaphors that George puts throughout this whole story. The thing that really wound up selling me on this book and making me give it the four and a half star rating that I did was the character development you see so much growth in the characters, especially in Purdue, but also in Max and Salvo, and they all have such unique personalities. Their idiosyncrasies come to the forefront in many situations throughout the story, and there are so many just really lovely interactions, particularly between Purdue and Max earlier on in the story. You see Purdue start to sort of warm up to Max because he doesn't really want Max to come on this journey with him, but eventually they sort of develop this father-son bond and it's really really neat to see how that affects both of them. How they both are really able to learn from each other. How Purdue is able to learn from Max's inexperience and therefore 
much more open view of life and love and the world and how Max is able to learn from Purdue in the way that he has so passionately and deeply loved this woman for 20 years even though she's been gone for that long and it's just really really neat to see the ways that George developed these really unique characters but still stuck them all in this world and I wouldn't really call this story a page turner by any means. I read it a lot slower than I've read some books in the last couple of months, but I just, I loved the characters and I think that's one of the reasons I gave it such a high rating is I obviously read, you know, sci-fi and fast-paced books and all of these things, but the stories that have always been my favorite, the stories that have always captured my imagination are not plot-driven books but character-driven books, and this 100% is a character-driven book, and I just so loved pretty much everything about this story. The other thing that I really, really loved about this book is it's effectively a love letter to books. You see that in Purdue's character in how he, you know, prescribes stories for people when there's nothing else that can help them. And there are so many wonderful just quotes and phrases and ideas that George puts forth. The thing that I loved is even though the main thing that the characters sort of deal with that this idea of reckoning with loss and love and life and loving and losing and all of these things, even though that's really the main thing that the characters are dealing with. The sort of overarching theme that George puts forth into this book is the power that stories have to change lives and heal hearts and affect people in ways that literally nothing else in this world can. And I have long been a believer of that fact. It's one of the biggest reasons that I love to read and I love to write because I very, very strongly believe in the power of story and have witnessed in my own life the way a book has been able to change my perspective in a way that nothing else can. And there are so many wonderful phrases about books that I just I absolutely adore and I will probably be referencing them for years and years to come. So there you have it friends, that is my review of The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts and opinions. If you have read the book, I would love to hear what you thought of it or if you might pick it up after hearing my thoughts, I would love to hear that as well. Thank you again so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye! Whenever Monsieur Perdue looked at a book, he did not see it purely in terms of a story, minimum retail price, and an essential balm for the soul. He saw freedom on wings of paper.